What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we saw another bullish follow through across the board in the stock market. We're regaining the bullish trends in the S&P 500 on our daily chart and it looks like we're back on the bull. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so today on SPY, we went up 0.81% and we continue to see the dead cat bouncing. I'm just kidding, the cat was never actually dead. Remember, this is a strong bull market and when you get to critical support levels in a strong bull market, people can and will buy the dip. So we got back down to that 50 EMA, which was an extremely strong support level, and we still have very bullish trends on the weekly charts. So there's no reason to believe this bull market is going to die easily. All of you bears trying to call a top are going to lose your shirt if you continue to try to accumulate short positions. We're very likely heading for another leg higher and from today's close to the previous all time high, we're less than 1% away. So again, this is not a dead cat bounce. This is a bull market and that's exactly what you expect to see in a bull market is bulls buying the dip and we're now regaining the full bull trend. So right now, if we start to see selling, you need to look for support right off of this 20 simple moving average, which is now at 431. 431 will be your critical support and you still have support at 430 and 428. So you have three strong support levels to pay attention to. And if we start breaking below any of those levels, you could start getting more defensive. Remember that anytime you bounce off the 50 EMA, you really don't want to revisit that level in the very near future. So if we break below the 20 simple moving average and start closing below 428, it's not very likely the 50 EMA is going to hold up as support the second time around. So watch for that because if we start breaking below these critical support levels I just gave you, it is still possible this is an ABC down and it could still lead to a stock market correction. It's looking a lot less likely because of how strong this bounce is and we're starting to break out to very near all time highs, which reduces the probability it could be a correction. Right now, this looks like a pullback and we're going for that next leg higher towards that price target at 441. So look for a breakout of 436 because that will validate my price target at 441. And we do have the full bull trend, so there's no reason to believe we won't continue to climb higher from here. So watch those three critical support levels I just gave you with the critical resistance at 436 and the price target at 441. Yes, we did go up on decreasing volume today, but again, you don't need volume to go higher. You just need no high volume selling and it's called the stairs up and the elevator down. You can take the stairs up and you're more than likely going to see the elevator down afterward. If we don't see huge volume buying, which I really don't expect to see because we are just going for another leg higher, don't get tricked by the volume. Low volume is just fine and if you're trying to short the market just because there's low volume, you will be part of that short squeeze that will take us to all time highs. So decide right now, do you want to be on the wrong side of the trade or do you want to be on the right side of the trade? Next up is the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, which we went up 0.77% today and we saw the triple Qs having a very bullish day. Remember the triple Qs never lost the bullish trend and we never even came back down to the 50 EMA before we saw people buying the dip. So as you can tell from my upward trend line, the triple Qs broke back into the trend, which is a very bullish breakout. We're back over all the moving averages for the second day in a row and we're starting to see the moving averages go back into that full bull trend mode and they will start creating separation from here. So on the triple Qs, you only have a few resistance levels to pay attention to. 363, the previous all time high at 365 and my price target at 367. Downside support will be 358, our 20 simple moving averages just below that and then we'll have our critical support right around 352 and then of course our 50 EMA right around 348. It's very unlikely we will see price action below 358 if we remain in this bull market. So watch 358 very closely because that will be your first critical level. I said it before and I'll say it again. Don't try to call a top in a bull market. You can see from here we just have less than 1% away to getting back to those all time highs and it was only a three day bounce to get there. Bull markets do not die easily so trying to call a top is just a loser's game and people have been trying to call a top going all the way back to about 2011. It's simply pointless to do, and even if you end up being right eventually, you'll probably have no money left if you continue to short a bull market. Next up is the Dow Jones, which regained the full bull trend today, going up 0.84% and closed right on top of our resistance level at 348. We have a small gap below, which will be a strong support level at 346, with our 20 simple moving average just below. Our 50 EMA is down here at 343, which is another critical support. Upside resistance is a break of 348 to get to our price target at 351 and above 351 we could start running to a brand new all time highs in the high 350s. 
So the Dow Jones is looking good here. And we did see a very impulsive bounce from that close a couple of days ago. So the bulls are coming in and the Dow Jones is starting to look bullish. And remember the last thing we saw the Dow Jones do was form a higher high and potentially a higher low. So that's what a bull market will do. It'll put in a higher high and then continue to put in a higher low. And over time, it's continuing to climb higher. So right now, there's no reason to believe that the Dow Jones topped out and that we're not going any higher because the price action is telling us to expect higher prices. On the Russell 2000, we saw a follow through on the bounce today going up 1.72% and we're seeing the Russell 2000 coming into that 222 resistance. The next critical resistance will be 224 and then 227 with downside support at 219 and the breakout level right around 215. The Russell 2000 is trying to fight off that full bear trend because we still have that 20 simple moving average above the 50 EMA. If the Russell 2000's price action can get back above 224, it can prevent that bear market and it could start going back into a neutral sideways choppy market. Remember, there's no trend for the bears or the bulls, even though the bears are starting to take over, so they will likely try to put a stand at 224 and drive the Russell 2000 lower. So look for a strong rejection at 224 if the Russell 2000 is going into a bear market. If we break above 224, things will be looking a lot better for the bulls. On the ARK-K ETF, we went up 1.57% today, and again, we see ARK-K closing above the 50 EMA for the second day in a row. Remember, the ARK-K ETF already looks like it had this ABC correction, and it did look like it was leading the way with the correction, and now it's heading higher. Remember, low rates are very bullish for the growth sector and the tech sector, and we are potentially going to see another leg higher in ARK-K. So look for ARK-K to hold up above critical support at 120, and we need to get back above 124 to really get the show started. So look for resistance at 124, just below 128, and then 130. If we can get above 128, RK will regain the bullish trend and it will start running. Critical support will be 120 and a break below that means we're coming back down to about 116. On the VIX, we continue to see the VIX getting crushed going down over 9%. And remember the VIX never broke out of that resistance trend line. The VIX has been forming lower highs ever since the crash in March 2020. And these volatile pullbacks are completely normal and expected in all bull markets. Right now, the VIX does look like it could bounce off of this level. So if you see the VIX getting back over 20, that will tell us we are expecting another leg lower. But as long as the VIX is below 20 and continues to get crushed, expect to see all-time highs in the stock market breaking out and going back into that bull run. On the TNX, we did see a bounce today. And remember, the TNX closed two of those gaps below. We have another gap below that just opened today around 1.22. And remember that the low rates will be bullish for the stock market. We see a little bit of a parabolic sell-off, so it's no surprise to see this bounce. It's a question of whether or not it's sustainable. If we continue to see the rates heading lower, that will be bullish for the stock market, and we will expect to see the stock market continue to climb higher for another few weeks here. On TLT, we saw exactly what I expected with that parabolic move is we're coming back down to fill that gap. We now have an island reversal where we gap down and that gap never actually got filled, so that could be a trend reversal pattern and we could see the bond market starting to cool off from here. However, it's still possible we come back up and fill that gap, so watch that gap just below 150. Right now, we still have a bull trend in TLT, and we do have an island reversal potentially forming, which could be a trend reversal from the bull trend, and we could see TLT coming back down. Remember that low rates are bullish for the stock market, and if we don't see the bond market getting out of control, we should continue to see a sustainable bull rally. On the US dollar, we cooled off today, but we're still above the 5 EMA and we still have the strong bull trend. Remember, this will put downward pressure on gold and silver, so you need to pay attention to the dollar. On gold, we continue to see a rejection off of that resistance level at 1829, and we're holding up above that support level at 1798. Below that, we have support at 1776 and 1761. If we can get a breakout back over the 50 EMA at 1814, look for a breakout of 1829 to send us to 1876. On silver, we continue to see selling and we're back below that support level at 25.8 and we're coming back down the retest support at 25.1. If we break down below 25.1, we could be coming all the way back down to 23.5, so watch that level closely. Upside resistance will be 25.8, 26, and our 26.5 resistance level. On Bitcoin, we're starting to see a big bounce off of that $30,000 support level even though we did close just below it. It's only a little over $200 below support, so it's really not that big of a deal but we are starting to see a bounce off of that level. Remember, if we continue to break below 30K, we're coming back down to support at 27,000. And if we can break above 35,000, we could start seeing a bull market in Bitcoin yet again. Remember on Bitcoin, it's very volatile and I am a buyer at these levels for the long term. 
I'm not too concerned with the intraday volatility and getting whipsawed because in the longer term, I do think Bitcoin will go much higher from here. So you have to decide yourself at these levels, is it worth accumulating or are you going to sit it out? If you want to trade Bitcoin, you need to try to catch it off support and you need to sell it quickly because we do have a bear trend. So you don't want to hold for too long. In the long term, I think Bitcoin is building a strong support level around this range. And I do think it will see a very powerful bounce off these levels in the very near future. It's very likely in the month of July, we're not going to see any monster moves in Bitcoin, but going into August and the rest of the year, we could regain that bullish trend. So watch these support levels at 30K and 27K and decide yourself if you want to accumulate down here for the longer hold. On Amazon stock, we were up 0.34% today and we closed back over the 20 simple moving average for the second day in a row. We do see Amazon starting to lose the bullish trend, but it's really not that bad because we just need price action getting just above 3600 to regain the full bull trend. So look for strong support around 3570 and 3552 with our resistance levels at 3655, 3760 and 3800. Remember, I think Amazon is going to 3800 and we're going into earnings season next week. So watch Amazon to potentially see a very impulsive rally coming up in the very near future. On Tesla stock, we were down 0.79% today and we see Tesla hanging below resistance at the 20 simple moving average at 665 and just above critical support at 650. Remember, if Tesla breaks critical support, it could be coming back down to 626 or 594. However, as long as Tesla is above about $650, we could see another bull run in Tesla on a break above about 665. So watch for that closely because Tesla has been consolidating for quite a while now. For over one month, we've seen Tesla going absolutely nowhere. So we have a full bull trend in the NASDAQ 100. So we could see the Tesla bulls stepping in in the very near future. But do remember, we have earnings just around the corner, which is always going to be a coin flip. So understand earnings is just a few days away. So if you're trading Tesla, make sure you're going to be in it for the long haul if you hold through earnings. On Apple stock, we were down about a half a percent today and we closed right on top of the 5 EMA. We're just above support at 145 with our next price targets at 148, the breakout of the previous all-time high at 150, and our price target above at 156. Remember, Apple has a very strong bull trend and the price action is well above critical support, so there's no reason to believe that Apple topped out and it's not going higher. Look for Apple to potentially make a run up towards 156 going into earnings, and then maybe we could see a sell off or some cooling down. The critical support levels on Apple will be 145, 143, and the 20 simple moving average at 141.5. On the financial sector, we saw a bullish day going up 1.72%, and we're back above all the moving averages, and we're starting to regain some bullish trending. If the financial sector can continue to climb from here, we could regain the full bull trend and we could see the financial sector starting to run. So pay attention to the financial sector because if it's going back into a bull market, that will be bullish for the S&P 500. On the industrial sector, we also saw a continuation of the bounce today going up 0.96% and we are regaining the bull trend with the price action above all the moving averages. This will be bullish for the S&P 500 to see all of the sectors going bullish together. The healthcare sector was up 0.16% today and it still has the bullish trend with the bullish price action. The energy sector saw a very strong bounce today going up 3.49% and we're back over the 5 EMA. The energy sector still has a lot of work to do and it's very close to being in a full bear trend. The 20 simple moving average is very close to crossing below the 50 EMA so we could see a bear trend very soon. If we see the price action getting back over the 50 EMA we could start to reverse that. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we can definitely see this bull market is not dying easily and we see a ton of buyers on the dip. We see this bounce is very meaningful and very impulsive, but there's always still the possibility we see more downside from here. So continue to watch that critical support level that I always give you and understand if we break below that, we could be seeing the market rolling over. But right now we're less than 1% away from all time highs and this rally is looking impulsive, which is a bullish indication. Remember, I always say be a bull in a bull market and don't try to be a hero and call a top. Everybody trying to call a top in this market is continuing to call it wrong and they're losing a lot of money and you want to block out all of that noise because as you realize by now, they're always going to be wrong. Eventually, somebody will successfully call the top, but it's just a broken clock and eventually somebody has to be right. Don't be that guy trying to call a top because there's no point. Be objective and follow the price action in the trend. Also remember that I have my trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that only trades T triple Qs. It's very simple to follow and all you need to do is execute the trades yourself. You will receive all of the buy and sell alerts via email and text message. I'm running a 50% off promo code for your first month so now is the best time to try out Bank Trade Alerts. You can find out how to join by clicking on the links below. 
I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this volatile market and always stay on the right side of the trade. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord trading community by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.